Seeing a tweet the other day really made me think about questions surrounding Arcane that have been eating away at me ever since the season finale. Chances are, they aren't getting answered until next year at minimum, so right now, we can only speculate, and that's exactly what I plan to do. To be fair, people who know the lore of League, even if it is somewhat limited, can probably make an educated guess, but given just how clueless I am about that, I can only really hazard a guess in line with the show, so let's not waste any more time, let's jump in. The first season ended on one of the biggest cliffhangers I've ever seen, and I'd like to take a guess at who will be amongst the body count from Jinx's rocket launcher. This is the question that gave me the idea for this video. Now, despite many people saying otherwise, I would like to take a punt on Mel dying. What? That's right, I think Miss Madada is going to perish, but hang on a minute, I have reasoning. The first one is that she is in the direct line of fire. I know magic exists in this universe and all that, but it's going to take something special for Mel to survive this. But even if she does, it's not exactly going to surprise me. I just think it'll be a cheap move. Also, bear in mind that she is a completely new character and the show has had absolutely no trouble killing them off so far. Get the point yet? Also, just before exploding into a thousand pieces, Mel takes off her ring, which looks suspiciously like an unyielding spirit buff. So in my opinion, not only will Jace likely have to struggle with the loss of someone he loved, but Mel's mother may also play a heavier role in the next season. Speaking of Jace, is he going to survive? Yeah, obviously, but maybe only because of quick reflexes and some kind of shield from his hammer, such as the shield from Vi's glove that we saw earlier. I would be astonished if Jace is killed, same goes for Victor, so let's just rule them out as surviving because it's plain obvious. Then again, I would not be surprised if Victor is heavily injured, pushing Jace even further than Mel's death has. And the lack of Victor's influence both mean that Jace, in his rage, will fully weaponize Hextech against the Zornite terrorist, indirectly giving Mel's mother exactly what she wants. The only way I can see her surviving is her magic jewellery. As for Victor, I think he will come to the realisation that the cause of many of the world's problems are human emotions, and so begins the Great Revolution, and he will go about finishing his transformation but involving cybernetics. Most importantly, he will alter his own brain to remove his humanity. I also thought something surrounding Sky. Sky's soul is trapped in the Hex Core, and that Shimmer possibly contains void light material. If that is true, I think the Hex Core is going to manipulate Victor into doing things by using Sky's voice, even if she is dead. It may sound outlandish at first, but just think about it. Speaking of, I'm also very curious to know what Sky is researching before getting vaporized, so there's another question for you. Also, chances are, most if not all of the counselors are killed, yes, even Caitlyn's mother. For me, that's why we get this shot of it flashing between them. There has been a lot of rumors that Vi will become an enforcer to help Caitlyn track down Jinx, and I think that is exactly what is going to happen. Because imagine Jinx's face when she sees Vi in an Enforcer outfit. She's going to lose her shit more than it already has been lost. Despite these two working together, Vi and Caitlyn's relationship will be strained throughout most of the season. As Caitlyn wants to kill Jinx and Vi doesn't n but knows something needs to be done about her. Also, despite popular belief though, I don't think that she will see Jinx as too far gone. Not yet anyway. Season 2 will definitely involve a showdown between Vi and Jinx, but beyond that, we've got no idea. Maybe Jinx could form a grudging alliance with her sister if they have a common enemy, or maybe Jinx will turn Vi and Caitlyn against each other, which is frankly something I'd love to see, to be honest. Speaking of Jinx, I have an idea that after nuking the council, Jinx will return to her workshop and have a mental breakdown, in which she will start talking directly to her guns, especially fish bones, instead of totally disembodied voices as she applies personalities to each one, starting with fish bones and pow pow. I have seen theories that Jinx will die next season, but honestly, I think there's more chance of pigs flying. Something else I want to cover is Vander. Now, obviously he is killed by Silco in episode 3, but, well, let's be honest, you already know where I'm going with this. Is Vander coming back as Warwick? When you think about it, Vander even kickstarted the process by getting loaded up on that drug shimmer, becoming misshapen and aggressive. 
The Warwick light motif plays at significant times in our game, which is odd for a character who isn't in the series, unless he has been the entire time. In the series' climactic showdown, Vi urges Jinx to remember who she is and remember loved ones from their shared past. When Jinx envisions Vanda, her mind scribbles chaotic images around him, forming long wolf ears, claws and shaggy fur. That may be a stretch, but honestly I think that totally figures. In League lore, Warwick taunts Vi with the line, who taught you how to punch? He says to Jinx, you were there. This lines up with Arcane, where Vanda taught Vi how to fight, and Powder later becomes Jinx as Vanda passes. His biography says that he saw a bearded man in the eyes of one of his victims, which suggests that that could be a moment of self-perception. Just thinking about that is cool. So yeah, I think Vanda returning as a furry is absolutely nailed on. I can see him having visions about a little girl crying out for help whilst being worked on by Singed. He'll wake up in that lab with little left of his mind and his body more beast than man. Speaking of Singed, another big question I'd like to ask is what happened to Singed's daughter? He tells Silco I too once had a daughter, most likely his daughter met the same fate as his reptilian mutation Rio. In fact, maybe his daughter was his first test subject. Maybe that's a bit dark even by arcane standards, but you can see what I'm getting at, but then again, maybe she was dying and he wanted to save her. The reason I bring this one up is because Singe is one of the more interesting characters that we know very little about. Presumably he failed in saving his daughter if that's what happened, but we're betting his daughter's death motivated his desperate search for immortality. Singe can actually be seen examining a locket with a photo of his daughter, and I've actually seen some people speculate that she might be Oriana, the Lady of Clockwork. A champion from League, but this may be a reach or just wanting it to be true rather than it actually being true. However, if you read into Oriana's backstory, it would actually line up quite well. In the game, Oriana was dying after being exposed to the pollution of Zorns, so her father gradually replaced all of her poisoned organs and body parts with clockwork until nothing was left of his original daughter. Maybe Arcane would change some details, but when you look at it like that, it's entirely possible, but I do think it's unlikely. Going back to Vanda, perhaps the biggest question that I want answered the most is why did Vanda attack Silco? We have no idea what would drive Vanna to kill his longtime partner. Given what we know about the characters, however, we can take our best guess. Most likely, this all began when Vanda realised that some things were more important than his rebellion and agreed to surrender. Maybe this was when he negotiated a deal with Grayson. I can bet that Silco wasn't happy about that. I'd be willing to bet that he refused to lay down his weapons, and Silco's pride must have threatened the fragile peace between Piltover and Zorn. One thing led to another, and Vanna had no choice but to kill Silco, which started this whole long-ass feud. Until a few years later, when Silco played that Uno reverse card. It's crazy, because it's so obvious that Silco later understands why Vanna did everything he could for his daughter, turning down the opportunity for his nation of Zorn, just for Jinx. It's so well written. But there's still a lot of unanswered questions, like, what exactly was Silco doing that proved so dangerous that Vanna had to kill him? How did Silco even manage to survive after Vanda held him under the water? All of these questions might never be answered now that Vanda and Silco are both dead. Or at least, Silco is. Now to end off here, um, I want to ask some of you for your theories because honestly, until season 2 comes out, we can only do this and thereby doing this, we are torturing ourselves. But if you can come up with some of the more compelling questions or theories, then feel free to let us know. I'd love to get involved with you in the comments and perhaps make another video on this because honestly, speculation is what is keeping me going with the show right now. But my main issue is that the majority of these probably won't even get answered and we'll be left wondering what could have been. If you agreed with what I'd say here, then... Like I've said, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments, and if you'd like to see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing, it really helps me out. I'm trying out a new kind of structure of this one, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say. Speak to you soon. What could have been?